Okay, so yesterday's activity three, the first part of the assignment was, uh, or excuse me, the focus question, the first focus question was, what part of a socket and bulb are conductors and which are insulators? And so here on the left, I took a picture of a lab handout that has the uh, expected results. When you touch clip A and cl clip B with your leads from the testing loop, it, the bulbs do not light up. They do when you touch clip A and plate A, and they don't when you touch plate A and plate B, plate A and the base, and clip A and the base. As far as the parts of the bulb are concerned, the testing bulbs do light up if you touch the tip of the bulb and the thread of the bulb, but not when you touch the glass or the black ring. Now, others. Uh, a lot of people asked me about this yesterday. The others section is uh, was up to you. To come up with some other things that you could test. And so some of the other things that you could test include clip B and plate B. If you touch those with your uh, testing loop, then the bulbs did light up. If you put both of them on clip A, they also would light up. If you touch both the clip B, they also both lit up. And then if you touch the threads and the tip of the bulb at the same time, not only did the bulbs light up, but so did the bulb that you were testing. When you put the clips just to the threads, the testing, or the testing loop of bulbs lit up. When you touch them to the tip of the bulb, the testing bulbs lit up. But if you touch the tip and the threads, of the bulb that you were testing, then that bulb also lit up, and that is very telling for sure. So when it comes to what parts of a socket and bulb are conductors and which are insulators, uh, stuff that's metal. So the clips, the plates, the threads, and the tip of the bulb. Now, I had some people ask me yesterday, well, if plate A and plate B are made out of metal, then why aren't the testing bulbs lit up? Well, if you look closely at the picture of the socket on your handout, there's a gap, there's a space, there's a break between plate A and plate B. And as we talked about yesterday, in order for bulbs to light, there must be a closed loop made entirely of conductors. Well, when you got that space between those plates, that's not a closed loop, that is an open loop. So our activity three consensus statements, I wrote these up and we're just gonna have to go with them since I'm not there to have the discussion with you. First off, the clips and the plates of the socket are conductors. The base of the socket is an insulator and must not be part of the continuous path. We're gonna talk about continuous path here in a second. The thread and tip of a bulb are conductors. Again, they are made out of metal pieces and the glass and black ring are considered insulators. So make sure you get those four statements down under consensus. If we need to talk about it more, we'll talk about it more on Thursday. We have a couple of new terms as well. Continuous conducting path or CCP for short. This is gonna be one of our most frequently used terms moving forward. A continuous conducting path is an unbroken set of connections made entirely of conducting materials. So this does not necessarily equal a closed loop. A closed loop must be made entirely of conductors. But remember, a closed loop means that we have bulbs that are lit. Okay, A continuous conducting path could be a continuous set of connections of conducting materials, but it might not lead to bulbs lighting. So for instance, if you took two wires and hooked them together, that is a continuous conducting path because as far as we know, the wires don't seem to stop anything from happening. But there's no bulbs, so we can't have bulbs that light. There's no batteries. What role do batteries play? We don't know, but those batteries have always been there. So it is possible to have a continuous conducting path, an unbroken set of connections made entirely of conductors, but not have bulbs light. If your continuous conducting path includes 
a set of batteries. Now again, we don't know what the batteries are for, but if it does include the set of batteries, then this would be equal to a circuit. So the term circuit means we have a CCP with a set of batteries in it. So all the things that we've tested on or tested with so far have in fact been circuits. Now let's get back to that bulb. The bulb is an interesting little device. Make this a little bigger so we can see it better. Here we have all of the different pieces labeled once again. We've got the tip down here, which is called the electrical foot contact. We'll just call it the tip. We have insulation. That is the black ring. We've got the screw threads, which are the threads. Glass mount. Not all bulbs have a glass mount, so we're just going to kind of ignore that for now. The bulb, that's the glass part. Our filament is the inside part. And then oftentimes the bulb is filled with some type of an inert gas. Now, the tip and the thread are made of metal. So they are conductors. So when you touch your wires to either side of the thread or either side of the tip, it did light. But for those of you who maybe tried this and touched the threads and the tip of the bulb, why does the bulb light when you do that? Well, I'm going to pull up a red marker here and so let's say we have a wire coming in and it touches the tip of the bulb if you notice here there is a wire inside the bulb that's touching that tip well that wire is made out of metal and so we can trace along this all the way up to the filament and then we can trace it down and around where it comes down. But then all of a sudden it turns and it touches the threads. So when you work with an incandescent light bulb, you have a wire touch the tip. You have a connection to the thread. And when that happens, you know, so this can continue back out, we have the possibility of the filament. And the filament is the part that lights up. So when we get a closed loop and the bulbs light up, the filament is the part that lights up. Okay. When, and write this down, when the tip and the thread of a bulb is part of the CCP, the continuous conducting path, the bulb will light. If you look at how the bulb sits in the socket, the tip touches plate B, the threads are touching uh, plate A, and so you have the threads and the tip as a part of the CCP in the bulb of light. So again, make sure you have this down. When the tip and the threads of a bulb are part of the continuous conducting path, the bulb will light. You can still have the bulb as a part of your CCP, you could have the threads as a part of it, you could have the tip as a part of it, but only when the thread and the tip are a part of the CCP will you get electricity to conduct. Okay, that's it. That's as short as I can make it. Uh, if you have any questions about any of that, uh, you're going to need to ask me during ELT. Make sure you stop in. Make sure you got all this information down. Make sure you wrote it down. Make sure you took notes on this light bulb business. And now you can get your worksheet one and you have the rest of the hour to work on that. It will be due on Thursday at the start of the hour. Again, if you have questions, you need to see me in ELT either Tuesday or Wednesday.